water signs cancer scorpio and pisces hi guys welcome to the end of january yeah so we're gonna look at just like we did for the fire signs and like we're going to do for the air and earth signs after you we are going to look at the energies post january for you now um this is something that i was initially inspired to do on patreon um i so i did a reading like this on patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations uh for the greater collective there um and then i decided to do this here so if you're interested in joining patreon join that uh check that out the link is in the description box below uh quick thing about the patreon situation if you want to sign up for patreon you might want to wait until the first of february at least or the first of the month if it is we'll say past the 15th or half past halfway through the month. And that is because when you initially sign up for Patreon, when you join, you are charged for that month. But then it's going to charge you again on the 1st. Even if you just signed up on, say, the 31st of January, you get charged on the 31st. And then because we're now entering into the next month, you're going to be charged for February. You're not going to be charged again after that. But keep that in mind. So if you don't want to be double charged, at least wait until the 1st of the month. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so check that out. Patreon.com slash Divine Conversations. But this... Um, reading is intended to look at the energies post January 2023 and to be quite honest now that I've gone through you know the Patreon collective initially and now the fire signs it seems that this energy is mostly having to do with the wrap-up of or post Mars retrograde because that seems to have have some sort of play on the elements here for what messages are meant to come through for us collectively okay so keep that in mind so, with that said, there is a little bit more of a time sensitivity to this, potentially, than normal, okay? Um, even if you're connecting with this reading way on down the road, it still may have something to do with Mars retrograde, potentially for you, now that we've come out of Mars retrograde. And it's interesting, because yesterday I was kind of battling between, should I call this a Mars, a post-Mars retrograde reading? But Spirit is saying, no, just call it post-January 2023, okay? Cool. Keep in mind, guys, this is also a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. We're going to get started with the Moonology Oracle deck, and I want to look at the cycles for you guys. And we're going to start by collect. Oh, shoot. Hold on, guys. I got to pause. I forgot my, <laughs> my list. Okay. Now I'm ready. Uh, I forgot my list for the timestamps, and I had to cover my arms and legs because dem skaters, y'all. Mm. All right, so we're going to get into this. We're going to start collectively, and then I'm going to break it down <clears throat> to the individual signs, yeah? And we're going to start uh, with the... Moonology deck. Now, can uh, Cancer, Scorp Pi yes, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Um, I want to start by telling you a story. Um, I feel like there is a there is a a need for harmony. I'm also hearing a goal to reach some sort of harmony. There also could be, and I mean collectively speaking, or we'll say between you and your physical surroundings, your circumstances, um, the people in your life, whatever. There, there is a, at the very least, there is a conscious awareness for a greater desire, for, or excuse me, there is a conscious awareness for a desire for greater harmony somehow. You're trying to put this together. You're trying to piece this together. You're trying to figure this out. You're trying to achieve this harmony, or at least maybe you want to, <clears throat> again, or at least the awareness of the desire is there. It could also be an awareness of a way that a greater sense of harmony can be achieved. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I don't have the microphone. <laughs> I hope you guys could hear that. I believe you could. Um... But we're trying to, we're talking about harmony here. You're trying to achieve a sense of harmony. Or you could be aware that you need to, or that you can. Okay, fine. 
the story I want to tell you is, and where this inspiration is coming from for you, I live um, in an area where there are a lot of wild, or at least free range, free roaming chickens. And I grow, as many of you know, I grow a lot of food or uh, uh, a lot of plants. I love to garden. Um, and I'm growing food. I'm trying to grow food. And I, I want to live in harmony with the chickens. And I want to allow them to be able to, you know, cross through my area too and, and down into so that they can forage and they can peck and they can move around and roam around and do their thing. I want to be able to allow them to be in my space too. But I've recently come to the understanding that I just cannot. Because if I do that, then it puts the plants that I'm trying to grow, especially the babies, at risk. Because the chickens will just go ahead and do their thing and indiscriminately just peck around. And unfortunately, some plants get destroyed. Some plants get straight up eaten. Like, apparently, I don't know because I don't grow it, but I've heard that chickens love marijuana plants. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? And they'll just come around and pack them up, eat them, and just eat them. And, and, it, and, it, and it's not a thing for them. It's, what, it's just what they do. And unfortunately, with like all the peppers and the, the, the strawberries and the <clears throat> all the other stuff I'm going to be growing, they're going to want to eat that. They already do. So I have to close off my space. And it, it was something that ultimately, it was not my first gut reaction. I tried to manage, mitigate, but it just, it, it wasn't possible because I also can't be here all the time to defend against that, you know? So I had to close off the space. I had to find where they were able to come through and close it off. Now, don't get me wrong. They have obviously plenty of everywhere else to go, but that harmony wasn't able to be achieved in the way that I initially desired. So I had to take certain steps. And so it, it kind of sounds like we're talking about boundaries here. Hmm. Two more shuffles, then. Okay. So, water signs. What's going on here? Okay, the end of a tough cycle approaches is your first card. Now, um, I forgot to say this before, but I highly recommend that you guys... Why am I even saying that now? <laughs> Let's just continue. What's going on here? The water signs, please. Two more cards then. Look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, look at this. It's time to release negativity and emotions are running high. So we have full moon in Capricorn. The, t the end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Sagittarius. Look at the bigger picture. This one is very important. We'll get there. Uh, full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio, you're showing up here. It's time to release negativity. And super moon. Wow. Emotions are running high. So I, well, yeah. For somebody here, uh, this super moon energy is really feeling like strong Cancerian energy or having a strong Cancerian influence. And I was going to say it's the moon, but then I was like, well, wait a second. This is a moonology deck. The whole deck is the moon. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, um, this is strong Cancerian energy anyway, because it's the moon. But, uh, but, but emotions are running high super moon. This one, there may be certain Cancerians who are really dealing with high emotions, uh, whether it be within yourself and or within others. Okay. Um, but that's, that could be all of you guys also as water signs. Anyway, um, but this, uh, no, this one. Well, no, both of these. Okay, so look at the bigger picture. Is really standing out here for you, Cancer. Uh, cancer. Okay, Cancer, but also uh, water signs. Um, really standing out here. This is where the boundaries come into play because... It, and then with it's time to release negativity. I feel like you guys have certain individuals, situationships, relationships around you that suffer, bring you suffering, that bring you suffering, suffrage, whatever. And you, the thing about it is, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. In terms of these relationships. 
you've been struggling to keep them afloat. And it's damaging you. It's damaging your will to live. It, it's causing you emotional damage. It's causing you mental damage, mental strife. Um, I'm feeling like you're, like you're constantly treading water, but just barely staying above. You know what I mean? And you're needing to zoom out and look at the bigger picture as to the reason why you must let this go. If you need to, if need be. Or it could just very well, at, at basic level, water signs, it could just be look at the bigger picture in order to make the appropriate changes. But what it feels like here is that these appropriate changes may be difficult, may be in, in, in the ways of needing to separate yourself from someone, stop communicating with that person, stop in interacting with this person, stop engaging in this situation with this person or just this si situation or circumstance in general. You know what I mean? Like putting boundaries up is the bigger picture here. Because in many of these cases, you putting boundaries up is actually more helpful than you think even though it may cause emotional upheaval. And for some of you, that's exactly what you're trying to avoid. Because you just don't want to deal with it. Or you know you're the stronger one. You know you're going to... I am feeling that, maybe for a Scorpio. And you're, you're, you know you're the stronger one, so you would be able to handle it, but... You, and it's not whether, it's not like you're trying to decide, this feels very strongly Scorpio. It's not like you're trying to decide whether they should or should not go through it. You're trying to die, decide whether you want to go through it with them because you know you're going to have to be involved in some way in through that emotional upheaval and, and whatnot, whatever. That feels strongly Scorpio. But also we are talking about it's time to release negativity, which is the full moon in Scorpio. So, okay. But anyway... Okay. Now, definitely this could be something that has come about during Mars ret retrograde or while Mars re was retrograde, you experienced things that enlightened you to the greater aspects, to the bigger picture <laughs> of this situation and or circumstance. And now that Mars is direct, you're able to take this action, move in this direction. I do, I, I kind of want to recommend that maybe if you're interested, if this is resonating for you in terms of maybe Mars retrograde, check out the fire sign reading. Specifically, yes, the collective reading, but specifically the Aries reading because Mars is the ruler of Aries and that was very strongly coming through during the Aries section of that reading. So check it out if this, is, this piques your interest or is resonating with you in this way, okay? We're gonna move forward and I'm gonna start and break this down now for each of the signs. So Cancer is first. Oh, yeah, okay. Hello, Cancer. We're going to break this down for you. We're going to look at this post-January energy <clears throat> 2023 for you. What is closing up, um, where we have come, where we are in terms of, you know, having gone through now January 2023. This does feel strongly having to do with Mars turning direct, which did happen on January 13th of 2023. That was the last day of Mars stationing direct. And then from the 14th on, it was fully direct. He was. Uh, check out the fire sign reading, specifically Aries, if Mars retrograde really resonates for you at this time. But also if you are just now, like if you skip to the timestamp of just cancer and you're watching this now, I highly recommend, especially if this part resonates for you, that you watch the collective reading that came before this, that <clears throat> we started this session with, because this is where we're deriving our <laughs> sustenance from. Okay. <laughs> the message is for you. All right, Cancer, two more shuffles here. So what's going on for you here? Now, um, Cancer, what stood out really for you uh, in terms of your energy for in the collective sign is this energy of the emotions are running high, which makes perfect sense. Um, okay. Either for you, well, for you, yes, um, but also for the people around you. I, I, I'm getting a very strong theme here for, I guess, the water signs in general, or maybe it's just you, I don't know, um, of emotional strength <clears throat> and emotional maturity. So Cancer, I feel like you may have gone through an upgrade recently in terms, your, in terms of your sense of emotional strength and maturity and foundation. 
um, and your ability to handle strongly emotional situations without losing your sense of cool or without losing control. And this is a very good thing for you. This is a good sign. But it's also a double-edged sword because with this comes the realization, comes the ability to look at the bigger picture and realize that you need to release certain negative situations from your life. Okay? Now, understand, Cancer, that with this comes the end of a tough cycle. But like it, the card says, it is the end of a tough cycle. So that doesn't mean that the ending is going to be easy necessarily, right? I should have said that differently. I guess I could have said that means that the ending is probably going to be pretty tough too. That's better. All right, Cancer. First card is the Four of Pentacles. Talk about time to release negativity here. And this, I instinctively put this right on top of emotions are running high and it's time to release negativity for you. So this, this might be glaring you right in the face right now. And this cancer may be why emotions are running so high. Because you know you have to give this up. I just heard. Or you know you need to stop this. You know you need to put this down. You know you need to stop this way of life or way of living in some cases I'm hearing. Look at the bigger picture, though. The Knight of Swords. Yikes. Death. But it didn't want to come out. It showed itself, but it didn't come out. Death. That's Scorpio, too, but... Knight of Wands. What is going on here? Time is running out. Look at the bigger picture. Oh boy. Bear with me, guys. I want to make sure that I'm reading this correctly. Um, okay. Ooh. So, we may have a little bit of volatility going on here. Emotions are running high. This is why emotions are running high is standing out for you, Cancer, potentially. Or maybe just in this circumstance in general. It seems that someone is inspired to do something. So whereas cancer initially, I felt like this would have been a thing in which you are not necessarily willing, so willing to make this decision or make this change, or maybe you're, we could say you're reluctant to do so. That's what I initially thought, but now I'm not so sure. Someone here is not, it feels like someone here is not so willing to keep this up anymore. because someone is seeing the bigger picture and someone is, an expire, is inspired by a new idea, wants to get something done, wants to get something started, wants to get something fresh on the table, is what I'm hearing. You have the Four of Pentacles. Yes, that's what we started with. Then we had the Knight of Swords, right? Okay, volatility, potentially, at least. If it's not volatility, it's the intention to sever some sort of tie. I call the Knight of Swords the, um, the henchman, the handyman, the muscle. You know, this would be the actual cutting. This would be the action of the cut, the Knight of Swords, right? So if it's not a sense of volatility where things are going to pop off and now y'all are, are fighting it or some shit, it's the action of severing a tie cutting out or letting go of whatever has been held on to here, whatever is needing to be released. But now underneath the Knight of Swords is the Knight of Wands. Talk about volatility. This is where the potential for the volatility comes from. And it's only because oxygen fuels fire, right? So if you've got a fire going already, Knight of Wands, and now you've got a bunch of oxygen driving itself through it, Knight of Swords. Man, you've got some explosive energy, potentially. You've got a, literally got a flamethrower right there, potentially. Okay. Maybe you could say the Knight of Swords would be gasoline. 
sometimes. I don't know. Would that be a water? Would that be a... No. No, it would be the Knight of Swords. Could potentially even be gasoline. Throwing gasoline on a fire. You know what I'm saying? But that's only in the potential because what I'm feeling in the Knight of Wands is actual intention to act on some sort of inspiration. Cancer. And this is where the inspiration comes from. The King of Wands. To the Wheel of Fortune. Remember when I said time is running out? That's the Wheel of Fortune here. And time is only running out because someone has an intention to take some sort of action. King of Wands. To make some sort of solid and substantial t change, Cancer. The final card you have here is the Page of Pentacles. With an overall energy at the bottom of the deck of the Seven of Pentacles. Time is running out. Because someone sees the pig bigger picture here and someone understands where negativity lies and needs to be released. The Seven of Pentacles in this situation represents the time-tested understanding of this situation and the subsequent knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from that time testing, and now being able to take certain action in a conscious direction, make the appropriate changes to move in a direction or to receive, to achieve a certain result. And in this situation here, it means or involves cutting some sort of tie somehow, severing some sort of connection. Or at the very least, setting some sort of new boundary cancer yeah for some of you here i feel like you are the the one who is righteously standing your ground and setting boundaries and i don't mean righteousness in any sort of derogative derogatory or negative <laughs> way direct derogative <laughs> i mean it in a actually a good way i want to say because you know who it is you are and you know what it is you stand for you know what it is that you want you're, re you're ready to release, or at least at the very least you could be, Spirit is saying. Now for some of you also, this is just a realization at this point. This is you either just starting to step into seeing, being able to see the bigger picture or are about to be able to see the bigger picture. And this is going to be, or this could potentially be the direct result. Quite frankly, what I want to say is, I, at least I hope this would be one of the most ideal ways for this situation or circumstance to work its way out. I feel like this is how spirit wants to guide this energy, this trajectory for you. However else that turns out for you, it's going to be specific to, either, e to each individual involved experiencing this. But this is kind of how spirit wants to like nudge you, okay? Direct, guide your focus, okay? Ooh! That's better. But um, that's what I have for you, Cancer. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Uh, what I do want to say to finally to wrap this up for you, Cancer, the end of a tough cycle approaches. So this is all meant to bring some sort of closure, bring some sort of end, bring some sort of, quite frankly, some sort of opportunity for you to get something off the ground. Okay, some sort of new project, some sort of new idea, and some sort of new belief, some sort of new passion, desire, whatever. I don't mean this in any negative sense. This feels inspired. Okay? So use it to your advantage. Cool. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I love you guys. I hope this was helpful for you. We are going to move on to Scorpio. Mm hmm. That's right. We are. Scorpio. Mm -mm. Hello, Scorpio. Scorpio, Scorpio, we're going to get into this for you skis. Now, if you have just 
use the timestamps to skip to this initially and you haven't watched the collective reading part of this, what we started with in this session, I highly recommend that you at least watch it after this, especially if this resonates for you because that collective message is where we're gaining, we're, we're drawing most, uh, all of our channeling from, okay? Cool. It's, it's intended to be a part or with or coupled with this message for you specifically, Scorpio, okay? All right, Scorpio, what's going on here for you? You know, Scorpio, I'm feeling a lot of clarity for you. It just feels like clear, open air, an open space. And what that's telling me is you know exactly what it is you need to do. You know what exactly it is you need to going. I feel like out of all three of you, water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, Scorpio, I feel like you're having the easiest time with this. Even though things may be falling around, falling down around you, what I'm seeing here is just clear, open air, or just like big, white, open vastness. Nothing is in your way. No obstacles, no obstructions. Even though outside of this focus of your consciousness, in quite frankly, we could say places you've left behind, there could be madness and death and destruction. And rah! <laughs> You're not there. You're in peace, you're in serenity, you're in clarity. You know what it is you need to do. You don't, you don't have these distractions of these other people trying to stop you, trying to tell you what it is and what time it is and what not, whoop de whoop and all that bullshit. Nah, man, I'm focused. I'm good. See, that's fixed energy too. That's totally Scorpio. Okay, good. I like this for you. Oh. One more shuffle is sufficient. Okay. All right, Scorpio, so what's, I, I, I almost feel like I don't really have anything to tell you, but let's see, Scorpio. Eight of Wands, yeah, 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 there it is, there's the clarity right there, whoop, whoosh, look at that, clear, open space, not an obstacle in sight, and then the sun just came, shining, hold on, okay, yeah, Eight of Wands. All right. What's going on for Scorpio? No? Nope. Yeah. Yep. Four of Swords to the Five of Cups. Absolutely. Like I said, doesn't it doesn't mean that there isn't some sort of um, death and destruction. I guess that's, that's really what I want to call it. Death and destruction. Interlude. Um, but... You're clear about it, or at least I want to say you're okay with it. Four swords to the five. I don't even want to say that. It's not that you're okay with it. You're okay in the midst of it. That's what I want to say. Four of swords to the five of cups. You know it's there. You know it's happening, but it, it, it's having no effect on you. Yeah, page of pentacles. Okay. See, yours is, yeah, yours is, your, your, okay. So this page of pentacles feels similar to the page of pentacles that came out for cancer. All right, so maybe you're dealing with a Cancerian or you have some sort of Cancerian connection or Cancerian energy going on within you. Um, but this page of pentacles for you feels way more solidly planted in the ground. I feel like maybe in terms of that comparison between you and Cancer, you would be a little more advanced or a little more ahead of Cancer. In terms of that, like they are just now starting to plant the seed where you planted your seed a few months to a year ago. You know what I mean? That's what I feel like in this page of pentacles. And then that was confirmed with, with what came after it. The ten of swords. Something is sufficiently over. And new growth may have even started is what I'm hearing in terms of this page of pentacles energy. What new has been planted. The seed I heard. One last card then. But this is also, again, Scorpio, why it feels like there is so much clarity here for you. You're the Wow. Talk about harmony. The last card you have is the lovers. Look at that, Scorpio. That's fucking awesome. Because to me, why is that awesome? Because it's telling me you're balanced, you're harmonized, you're whole, you're equal. You're pure enough to hold this higher level of understanding or this clear and open space, this clarity. Okay. Oh. And then you've got the Knight of Swords, too. Look at that. It's the overall energy at the bottom of the deck. See, okay, okay, here we go. 
Here's your message, Scorpio, because that Knight of Swords energy feels like it could easily slip into autopilot. And man, you do not want that. You want to stay as consciously aware of this Knight of Swords energy as you possibly can, Scorpio, okay? Because you do not want to go popping off on people absent-mindedly just cutting, waving that sword around like it ain't nothing. No, honey. I, it ain't that type of party. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's really where this message comes into play for you here, Scorpio. Be, be mindful of this Knight of Swords energy. I'm not even trying to tell you to be careful with it. I'm telling you, I'm asking you. I'm not even trying to tell you nothing. Don't let, don't let me tell you nothing. Don't, and damn sure don't let me tell you what to do. All right. But what I'm what, what I'm asking you for here and what spirit is, what source, what God create source creator is asking you for is to be mindful of how you're using this sword. OK, that's it. That's all there is to it. That is Scorpio's message right there. Short and succinct. Shit. That's it. Yeah. God just said, yeah, trust me. That's it. OK, cool. I'm, so, I'm okay. 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 That's it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Love you guys. I really want to say I wish I had more for you, but the spirit is the source is telling you no. Look at the bigger picture. Okay. It's time to release negativity. All right. You got it. Cool. I love you guys. Oh, wait. There you are. <laughs> okay. Next is Pisces. Hmm. <laughs> Hello, Pisces. How are you, darling? It's good to see you. Mm. Okay. So. God is telling me that Scorpio's reading needed to be nice and short and sweet. And now I see why. Because Pisces, we're going deep with you. We're, something's pulling me way down, Pisces. Yes, I know I just lit that cigarette. But something here is pulling me down into the depths of the water. But I'm being pulled down here intentionally because there's something that needs to be seen. Now, initially, I feel frightened. But, but me, apprehensive, because I'm like, whoa, I don't want this entity pulling me down here, but I'm hearing, no, there's a reason for it. Something needs to be seen and I'm being pulled. It's getting darker and deeper, but there is a light down here. There's a light down here. Someone is energetically pulling them up, from up pulling themselves up from the depths of misfortune. Emotional misfortune. It's time to release negativity. So, Pisces, I've been watching a lot of... Um, people recounting their near-death experiences. It's been very interesting, and it's actually been helping me to refine my connection with God, with Source, Creator, with Unity, with Oneness, so um, it's been cool. But um, in, in one recount S someone spoke of while they were on their way back from the other side to their body it, to come back to life because again this is a near-death experience they experienced what what really could only be described as the realm of the energetic vampires or the lowest l lowest lowest realms where there are souls that are We'll say writhing in agony. And she, with her connection with God still, was being pulled, just like I was experiencing, and this is, okay, just like I was experiencing, was being pulled down, down, and down into this darkness. And eventually, hands of these souls, these individuals that were in this deep, dark place, started to be able to reach her. And... Once they were able to touch her, they would latch on to her beingness 
don't want to say body because she wasn't in her physical body that she was in her spiritual being so they were latching onto her beingness and they were sucking her the energy the life out of her and subsequently pulling her deeper and deeper until eventually she would just be enveloped and in this and just with all of this down in this lost in this deep dark agony with all these other souls and the only way she was able to get herself out was to call out to god and say god i want to be with you i don't want to be down here with this i want to be with you god i love you so much i want to be with you and the more she did that the more and more and more she was pulled out of this darkness and back into the light and the point for her to experience that was to recognize that nothing, nothing else mattered but your connection with Source, your love connection with God, which is, the, which is what we have through free will the right to choose to have or to not have. And the only reason those beings were down in that darkness was because they chose not to have a love connection with God. Now, the reason why I am telling you this is because as I was connecting to your energy, Pisces, this is what I was seeing play out in my head again. And when I got down to that light, I was like, why is that light in this darkness here? Is this a false light? And Spirit said, God said, no, that's not a false light. That's a real light. That is an individual who is developing this connection with God. And the more they develop this connection with God, the more their light grows and the more they're pulled and drawn out of this darkness. Releasing negativity. You may not necessarily resonate with that in the sense of God or whatnot. That may not really connect for some of you, but it's really more about building your personal power also that is helping you to bring the end to these tough cycles, Pisces, and to release this negativity. And it is about looking at the bigger picture. Because for some of you, this is playing out, this dark place that you seem to be enveloped in is playing out in terms of some of the people or the circumstances, the relationships, the job situations, or whatever that are surrounding you. And you are needing to build up this light energy in order to release yourself from this situation. But in order to do that, you're having to look at the bigger picture. And this feels similarly to cancer, but it's like you're keeping yourselves in this situation. But you need to release it. You need to let it go. So it's like, it's not about going down there into that deep depths, trying to pull someone out. They have to do it themselves but you help them by shining a light. And in some cases, you shine your light outside of their depths, where they can still see you, of course, but you, it's not about being down there trying to pull them out. No, you're just gonna get pulled in with them and you're gonna get stuck down there, you know, with them. That's like, well, yeah. So that's looking at the bigger picture here. And this also could be Pisces, why emotions are running high, because you're having to cut these ties. Hmm. Okay, so let's get into the cards then. Three shuffles here, Pisces. Look at the bigger picture is really standing out, Pisces. Really standing out. And this is a lot, now there's a lot, a lot of emotion welling up, so. Okay. So the lovers in the Three of Pentacles wanted to show itself so far. This is about reconstructing you, I'm hearing. You making a choice to build the appropriate or proper structure for yourself. Whether this be financially, romantically, just interpersonally, I don't know. What's going on for Pisces? The star in reverse. I'm feeling like you've lost hope is the first thing that I want to say. Um, but also what I want to stay with, say with the star in reverse is that a healing process is underway. Yes, and the next card that comes out here with that to confirm that also is temperance. 
So it's not so much, you might feel hopeless at this time. There may be a sense of lack of hope, but then, you know, and maybe this is cliche, I don't know, but like faith the size of a mustard seed, you know what I'm saying? But, um, mm-hmm, okay. But um, with the star in reverse here, I also feel like there's potential for healing. It is in reverse because this healing needs to happen. It hasn't taken up yet. It hasn't been taken up yet. The potential is there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ooh, okay. Oh. Ooh, hard and tough lessons. Pisces, what I want to say is there's no two ways about this, really, at this point. And I don't mean to be condescending. Um, but some of the, the tough lessons are involved here. Hard structures, hard boundaries. Your overall energy is, wow, okay, is the Hierophant. But behind this Hierophant energy is a sassy, sexy Queen of Wands. <laughs> to the Fool. Ooh, honey. Ooh. Someone is about to break out here. I mean, I'm coming out. Hey, I want the world to know. Got to let it show. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm feeling here. But see, that's why there need to be some hard boundaries, hard rules. The, the, the Hierophant. Now, the Hierophant represents structure. It represents, into, in, excuse me, institutions, um, government, in some cases, you could say law and order, but it, but, but, but if it does represent, see, okay, but if it does represent law and order, the Hierophant, it represents spiritual hierarchy, law and order type of, that, well, that's not, okay, that's not law and order, that's hierarchy. Spiritual order, there it is. And this spiritual order is coming in terms of what it is you feel it or this person feels inspired to do. That's why the Queen of Wands is backing this. There is a, a, a desire to break out, to break free. You know, another good song for you, Pisces, would be by Basement Jacks. It's called Breakout. I gotta break away. Cause don't know, nobody around here listens to a word I say. <laughs> it's funny. It's a great song. I'm living the same old shit each and every damn day. Yeah. What is that? Remedy or Rudy? I don't remember which album that is. But it's Basement Jacks break out. Anyway, um, there, and, and this breakout energy, this desire to move forward is coming through here in terms of this. So we started with the star in reverse and then you have temperance, right? After temperance is the eight of pentacles. And what I'm hearing with the eight of pentacles is the potential to do something about it, to get this work done, to change this atmosphere, to go ahead about it. And then con con uh, following that, you have the five of pentacles, but then the magician. Okay. So there is definitely a desire, I want to say, to do better for oneself. To do better for yourself. To make shit happen. Or to make this shit happen. You know what I'm saying? And then further confirming that, boop, is the knight of wands. There's that knight of wands again. Crying. I'm seeing someone, someone is in tears. Right now, either right now listening to this message or about this situation. And what I'm feeling in the reason as to why potentially why this person may be crying is a dominant feeling here is why do I have to do this? Why does this have to be the way this works out? Why do I have to pull the one? Why do I have to be the one to sever the tie without being too graphic? Because this is a very sensitive situation. Sensitive. To, I'm not trying to be too, but. Um, okay. What I am also hearing is, in some cases, why do I have to be the one to pull the trigger? Like this. This is so unfair. This is not what I wanted. <clears throat> but actually it is. In order to get here. This is what you want. And this is why this is blocked. I want to pull one more card on this. The star in reverse, please, for Pisces. 
the Ten of Cups. Emotional fulfillment at its purest, at its finest. T finest. Anything else you want to say for the star in reverse with this Ten of Cups here? Ha! <laughs> okay. The Nine of Swords. And the Moon. Ooh! We Oh, Pisces. What is going on? Well, now, also, Pisces, this is you showing up as the Moon, but also it can represent Cancerian energy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We may have to do an extended reading on this one, Pisces. Let me know in the comment section down below because there is a lot here and I want to get into this, but I don't want to make this session too long. I, I feel like this, if that's the case, guys, this deserves its own reading S because um, at the bottom of the deck is the tower. So uh, we can get into this if you really want to, but I need you guys to let me know, please. In the comments section down below, shoot me an email if you want. Or if you want to do it personally, if you want to get a personal reading on this, hit me up. The star is in reverse. Healing and happiness are the potential here, obviously confirmed by the Ten of Cups. But therein lies the problem, the Ten of Cups. I'm just going to give you the overview of this, and if you want to get into it, okay, the Ten of Cups. Because while the Ten of Cups de can definitely represent your, well, excuse me, it does represent your ultimate, as an individual, ultimate emotional fulfillment and happiness, wish fulfillment even, right? The star, wish fulfillment, right? But with the Ten of Cups here, it also can represent those same aspects for the other people or situations or circumstances around you. And that's where shit can get messy. And therein lies the problem and the illusion, but also, al also, <laughs> also the potential solution. The tower. Yikes. I'm gonna leave it there, Pisces. Unless, wait, no, there is There is a, look, 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 there is a desire to get out of some lack mentality here, Pisces. I, psh, point blank period. That's, that's the long and short of it. <laughs> okay. That's what, that's really, that's really just what this is about. Five of Pentacles, the Magician and the Knight of Wands. I mean, in whatever order you want to put it, it, it all says the same thing. Okay. There is a desire to get the fuck up out of this mess. In some cases. So there you go. I love you guys. And this makes so much sense also. Especially since this may be resonating in terms of Mars retrograde or Mars going direct. Okay. Now that Mars is direct, shit, it's time to take action. So maybe watch the fire sign reading in terms of this post-February, I'm sorry, post-January situation energy. Uh, and specifically Aries, because Mars rules Aries. And a lot of that energy came through for Aries. Okay. I love you guys. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below. Check out Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can also be in the description box below. And yeah, that's it. I love you. Bye. I'll see you later. <laughs>